Hi guys, my name is Michael. In this video, we're going to be talking about different terms used on the World Wide Web. Like, what does the internet mean? What does a uh, DNS mean? We're going to talk about it. So let's go straight into it now. The internet is a global, worldwide network that connects computer systems across the, the world. It includes several high bandwidth data lines that comprises the internet backboard. These lines are connected to major internet hubs that, that distribute data to other locations such as web servers and ISP. So the information that you request for when you're browsing the internet is being sent to you over a fiber optic cable and these informations are distributed on different servers around the world so this is a little diagram showing you the internet backbone our information is being sent around the uh, the world from a server in the united states uh, then the optic cable going under the sea, passing on the information up to the next ISP who then distribute it to uh, the users who need the information then from there another cable from different parts of the world and this is how the internet is the internet is basically just a connection of computers sharing information with each other Internet is not done by our satellite. Basically, it's usually distributed by our cables. The satellite to make to use the satellite to distribute the internet will be very slow. So mostly we use cables, that's like optical cables. You can see how um, maybe from the YouTube or Facebook database how information gets to you optical cable but not by satellite no so this is another diagram showing you the connectivity of the internet you can see how it is around um, Africa Nigeria how the cables are being um, moved through under the sea to different parts of the world and when it gets to a country then um, distributed to the ISP or the uh, server internet hubs or the internet hubs what is a page a web page is a hypertext document provided by a website and displayed to a user in a web browser a website typically consists of many web pages linked together in a coherent fashion. The name web page is a metaphor of a paper page bound together into a book. So let me quick explain this. When you start creating your HTML, the first um, page you're working on like the index is called is it's called a page because it's only one but by the time you create other pages like the contact us page the service page the about us page everything together is now called a website but it but each time you go online and you just click maybe like the home you are only receiving one page so that is called a page what is the meaning of ISP ISP means internet service provider company that provides internet connection and services to individuals and organizations ISPs are all connected to each other through network access point, public network facility on the internet backbone. 
So in the earlier diagram I showed you the all the connectivities, you can see each cable once it leaves from one country to another goes to an ISP who now distributes the network in that country and also to share it to another ISP. So let me explain how your browser works. Once you go on to your Chrome and you type in the address, maybe you want google.com, once you type it in and you send it, so once you send it, it goes to your ISP, your internet service provider, then it sends to your DNS. Just, I'm going to explain more about the DNS later on. But just understand, the DNS is a, it's like a phone book of the internet, this internet phone book. Because the, D, the internet doesn't understand google.com because google.com is automatically converted to numbers. So it says, I don't know him personally, but here is his address. So the DNS now gives us the address of google.com. The address is called the IP address. So you re so automatically it sends you the IP address back to your browser of Google.com. So once your your browser receives the IP address, it goes to Google server, then retrieves the information it wants, which is basically the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, the page of Google, which now displays on your browser. And that is what you usually say each time you request for Google. So this diagram is just to show you how the internet works in your uh, area. So a little more information on how the internet works. From here you can see home local area network then the wireless modem then the information is sent from the modem to the line of sight transmission as basically the the towers around the area and from that tower to another tower that and everything is all done wireless transmission to the isp provider who provides you the information, the internet, basically, that you use. So another way we can look at this is when you are browsing on your phone and you request for a website, then maybe youtube.com, then information is being sent from YouTube server to you through the fiber optic cable all the way from wherever country is coming from in America to the ISP uh, provider in your country. The ISP provider now distributes that network through the towers around your area. Then you receive the information on your cell phone. So something like this, I can see the tower over here then the cell phone distributing the signal around the people to the people around the area so that's why i have like mass in different areas so that it can cover the people in that area they can receive internet services make phone calls so earlier i said i was going to explain more about dns server so the DNS is an online directory. So if you look at this diagram, this is google.com. But the machines don't understand google.com. They understand codes. So the DNS checks the information as google.com. That's okay, to google.com translated to machine language as is a 142.2 five zero point nine six point one six which is the isp address of google server so which means when it checks 
its information is sent to back Google ISP address. Once your browser receives the ISP address, it is automatically able to locate the server where the information you requested for is and that information is sent back to you to your browser. All this is done in less than a few seconds. So what does DNS mean? DNS means Domain Name System. It's the phone book of the internet. Humans access information online through domain names like nitimes.com or espn.com web browser interacts through internet protocol isp address dns translates domain name to isp addresses so the dns translates google.com into ip address so the browser can load the internet resources each device is connected to the internet as a unique IP address which other machine use to find the device. DNS server eliminates the need for human to memorize IP address such as 192.168.1.1 more complex newer newer alphanumerical IP address such as this so the computer doesn't really understand the text but with the help of DNS which translates the google.com into an IP address which is able to send it back to you so that you can locate the Google server where it is and receive the information that you need. So this is another great diagram showing how it works. First you send the information www.youtube.com to the DNS. The DNS checks it and says okay this is the IP address of the server of youtube.com then sends it back to your system. In your system sends it back then your system is able to locate the server of google.com and transfer the data that you need back to your system and all this happens in less than a second so this is a diagram on how the optical cable looks like what does it mean of ww i mean this is a term that we always see each time we are on the internet or in our browser. So what does the meaning of WW mean? Means WW means World Wide Web. Commonly known as the web is an information system where documents and other web resources are identified by uniform resource locator. Now uniform resource locator is called URL. So that's the full meaning of URL you usually um, see. It is called Uniform Resource Locator, which may be interlinked by hyperlink and are accessible over the internet. So, what is a web browser? A web browser is an application software. For accessing the World Wide Web, when a user requests a web page from a particular website, the web browser retrieves the necessary content from a web server and then displays the page on the user device. So the browser you use Chrome, uh, Firefox, this is how basically how it works. The web browser allows you to be able to access information on the internet. Without the web browser, you won't be able to, you won't be able to access information on it. What is a website? 
A website is a collection of web page and related content that is identified by a common domain name and published on at least one web server. Notable examples are wikipedia.org, google.com and amazon.com, all public accessible websites. So I want to explain some things in this text. It says a website is a collection of web pages. So that is a collection of more than one uh, page is called a website. And also it says a related content that is identified by a common domain name. So there's a name identifying the old content in the website like wikipedia.com, google.com, amazon because everything are all related, they all belong to one um, content creator, google.com uh, google or amazon.com. Then this content is loaded onto a server. So each time you request for maybe um, Amazon.com, you are requesting for the information in this in the server, and the server sends you the website information, which now gets displayed on your screen. So I hope you understand all what I've been trying to say. I know I repeated some of the things I said so that you can understand it and have the whole idea of what it means to be a website developer or the things involved in it because you need to know some of this information so that you can have the whole idea of all the things you are uh, creating who you are creating it for and how it will be delivered to them I repeated it a little so that it will stick and you will understand it. So if you do understand it, please make a comment and saying you understand it. If not, I'm gonna be a little bit sad if you say no, you did not. So right now I'm gonna show you how you can create your first uh, web page. The process involving opening your browser, creating documents you need and linking it up together. So if you want to start coding, how do you go about it? So I'm going to show you how you can start with the setup. First, you have to create a folder. Come down here. Okay. So you can choose to name it if you want. Well, I'm just going to leave it like this. Then come to Visual Studio, click on it. So it's open right now. So now we want to bring in the folder into Visual Studio. So we then we click on open file. You might not see this all the time. We can just go up to file and click open folder. Then so click here open folder or click here open folder. So now, let's click open folder. So we might find our way to the desktop and yeah, this is new folder. Select. Okay, it's gonna ask you this to see if you trust the folder on file you are bringing into Visual Studio. So just click on Yes, I trust the author. You can see the folder up here, new folder for. Let's remove this by clicking here. Then click on new folder. So right now, we're going to create a file. Because we only created a folder and brought it in into Research Studio. Now we're going to create a file. But if you notice, it's empty when you click on the folder. So let's come here. 
click on new file then we give it a name okay then we save it but first I, I want you to click on auto save so that as you are typing automatically all what you are doing is being saved so in case your system goes off or something happens you will lose your code so auto save on you can see it's ticked here that means it's on so let's save it now come up to save then we give it a name so we remove this untitled and we call it web then after that we come to save as type click so we're working on html right now if you're working on css if you, if you wanted to create a CSS file, we click CSS or HTML or JavaScript. This will really make the difference in the type of file you are creating. So let's click on HTML and click Save. You can see how the HTML logo right here is saved and we can start typing in our code. So let me show you a shortcut on your keyboard press shift and the exclamation mark which could be on the number one button so we're going to press it at the same time shift and exclamation mark so we're going to do it now okay so we have this, it's an image abbreviation. So we click on it. So we have our structure already out now. Okay, so now I want to open the browser so that as I'm coding, I can see what is showing on the screen. For that to happen, I need to come um, to the file, the file right here. Left click, right click, then open, come to open with live server. Live server is an extension of VS um, code. You can get it from the extension store if you want. My advice is to have it because it makes it easy when you are coding. You can see what you're doing immediately. So we come down, we click on extension with the icon. Okay. That. okay. Once you come to extension, these are some of the extensions I've installed on my Visual Studio already. So come up to the search box up here and type live. Then just type sub. Okay, you can see it here number two. Live server. Click on it. Okay, from here you can just click install. I've already installed it already on my system on my Visual Studio, so that's why it's already saying it says uninstall. If I have not installed it, it will say install and after installing, I will enable it right here. So let me go back. So I'm going back to I'm coming to the file, click on the file, left click and open with live server, click on it. You can see down here it says port 550. Okay, that's done. So it's opening up now. I don't really see anything because I've not typed anything in the body yet. So let's minimize this. 
and also minimize the Visual Studio, Optic Explorer. This closes that. Then reduce it a little bit more. Okay, like this. Reduce you. You can see them, but now side by side. So if I come into the body, I'm going to take a tag H1. Then close it automatically to give me the closing tag. Then I come into it and type hello. You can see it's already appearing on the screen. Hello world. Already I type experience. Yes, already on the screen. So now, if you want to add CSS to your HTML, there are three ways you can do it. First, you can do it inline. Inline means I'm coming into the code itself where I want it to have an effect on and type style. So then change the color. So you can see as I'm typing, I'm having uh, options I'm trying to guess what I'm trying to do and most times it does guess right so let me choose the color I want blue violet and you can see automatically the text has changed but it's not the best using inline code because if you want to make an adjustment and you have a lot of code it's going to be hard you have to look for it now change it the second way is also external. That's to create another file and the type will be CSS. Then we add a link. We put a link into the end of the HTML. We put a link into the end of the HTML like this. Then we put the name of the file right here. So this is how you can create an external CSS file. We link it by typing in link real equals double quotation mark style sheet then href then the name of the file. You put the name of the file in between the two quotation marks. That is how you can link it. If you don't want to create an external file and you want your CSS to be in your HTML, you type a tag called style style. So we have our opening and closing tag, and in between the tag. We now target the H1. So we can either use H1 like this, then a quality like we now use a quality brace, quality bracket basically, then um space, let me change the color. So I'm gonna remove this. Inline CSS are put in here so that there's no conflict. So now let me color this to green. Yeah. Okay, then we refresh and look at the, the screen. 
So sometimes you may still need to refresh if the live server doesn't refresh by itself. So now, this is one way how to target an element with CSS. You can also use a class or a div. If I want to use the class or a div, I just come in and type class. Then I'll give it a name. So and then just put HB. Then come up here. You can see the color change back to black. Once I put the D, once I put the D, it should automatically change back. Can I see? Oh, something. Okay, yeah. So now for a class. So when you want to target a tag with a class. You have to use a full stop. You can see it magically changed. Full stop that stands for is a symbol for the class. If I was using an ID, let me change it to ID. ID. ID will take an hashtag or hash. You can see that came back again. The brain. So this is how you can use a class or a ID. So this video going to stop for now. Please subscribe, like and comment. I like to know what you think about the video and any other video you want me to create. Bye.